they are actually trapped by our attitudes. They can't escape because of our attitudes. Because we, uh, we create this social notion that it is shameful, it is something you could never admit to. It, uh, when you are in such a situation, it's very hard for you to come out and say, look, I need help. You know, I, you know, I, I, ha I have this past. You, she looks for a job and the employer asks her, what were you doing in the last three years? And she's unable to declare that career history. And like most of you who can, unless, you know, you've, <laughs> whatever. Um, so, you know, that trap, that entrapment is actually created very much by our own attitude. A toilet cleaner could put on her resume, I was a toilet cleaner for three years. It may be dirty, it may be dirty and whatever, but it's not something where we impose, where we create a social taboo around it. So that's, in that sense, trap is very much, in my view, uh, something that we actually is created by us. Not, don't blame the pimp, don't blame everybody else. Of course, sure, they do the bad, their own bad things, but it's almost as if we have woven that trap. And it's so easy for us then to um, uh, wash our hands of it by blaming the, the mercenary structures of the John and the pimp and the brother owner and so on and so forth. Because if we did something about our own attitudes, uh, as, some, as some NGOs do, you know, they, they, they go out and they, and they try to make this a talkable subject. Then we, in fact, chip away at that social and moral trap that we are creating for these persons, and it gives them an exit option, an exit option. This is what I'm trying to say. Um, for example, take, take another example, and this, is, and this is where I'm, you know, trying to come to something that's related to one of my pet peeves. Um, Take somebody who is by nature a transgendered person, all right? Uh, it's a male, biological male, who believes, who, who feels himself a woman. And, he, and, and to match his persona with what he thinks he is, he dresses as a woman. How difficult is for this person therefore to get a job? You, you know what I'm talking about, drag, a drag, okay? Katoi, Vamdan, Bapo, you know? Um, this person has a real hard time getting a job, you know. Uh, a lot of corporations says, no, 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 this is not the kind of corporate image we want with you around. So, there are many, many instances in Singapore and every country where these persons have to resort to the one thing left they can to earn money for themselves, for their parents, for their, to send their brothers and sisters to school. Now who the hell trapped them in that situation where they have no further, no other serious um, career options? Career being, you know, a loosely used word here, but still, right? And it's basically our attitudes. Why, are, why do we find it so difficult to contemplate the idea that a transgender person in drag is working in a bank, uh, is working um, um, in, is teaching school? Have you ever hit on women? Uh, yeah, I'm married. But have you ever hit on women? <laughs> More social taboos. Look, no, it's not all, a social taboo. I know what you are saying. We, I, I, I will contest that. I think all of us do things that offend somebody at some time. Really. We approach somebody who has absolutely no interest, who is disgusted by our approach. Um, what happens in our mind is that we tend to magnify those instances where that person tends to be the other. That's really what happens. All right? in, our, in our minds, we magnify it, we remember it, and we use that as a stereotype for the whole lot of them who belong to that class. All of us have hit on other people and have been rejected. Own up. <laughs> all right? And they have taken offense, honestly. But 
we have forgotten it because they are our own kind. But once a, another person, sometimes it's just a person of a different race, you know, all right? Uh, you know, you, you get a Chinese girl who's, who, who's hit on by a Chinese boy and she rejects him, she forgets it. But when you have this drunk Amor approach him, she'll remember for the rest of his life and stereotype all drunk Amors as drunk and uh, lecherous. And it happens. And this is what I have. This, this, is, this is exactly where we, I would, I, I, this, this is my point. I think we should interrogate some of these uh, easy um, assumptions that we make about uh, why there are these ills in this world. Because many of the roots of these ills lie with our own attitudes and our own reactions to other people. And in so doing, we are the ones partly responsible for weaving that trap around which, within which they cannot escape, or find it very, very hard to escape. Okay, climax. No, really, that, that was the climax. Gee, I didn't realize it happened. <laughs>